Hello there my crafty friends. Today I'm going to make another off the page project. Um, I have an idea in mind where I want to make something in this like box frame. I'm not quite sure yet what it's going to be. It's sort of just a bit of experimenting but I thought I will video the process and just see how we go. So I'm going to just start first with the background of the project. I'm just going to use a sheet of watercolor paper. Now I only really need the small section but I'm going to sort of make the whole page because if it turns out good we can always use it for something else. So I'm just going to start by just sticking down some pages, just some text from a from a novel just here and there. I do like this sort of in the background. I like the wording in the background. So I'm just going to use a glue stick just to stick some of this down. Just anywhere is fine. It really doesn't matter. And then once we actually have done the background and if we're happy with it, I'm just going to cut a section of it to use for the project. Now if you don't have an old, um, like an old book, which you can just sort of get at a second hand shop, you could also use um, magazine text, that could also work. I might put this one, I do like it sometimes if it's sideways. Maybe two pieces down here. Just like that. Now for the colour, I'm going to use some... I use my inks a lot, so I thought maybe for a change I'm going to use some acrylic white and just some watercolour paints. Um, just in the browns, I want to get sort of like a vintagey rustic look, similar to how I did my um, vintage tins, if you've seen that video. And I'm going to use my roller. I actually haven't used this before, so I thought it's a good time to try. As, we, as I said, we're just experimenting, so I'm just going to see how we go. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the white acrylic, and then just a little drop of color. Oh, I haven't even opened this one yet. Just a little drop of colour. I have no idea how this is going to look. We'll soon find out together. I'm just going to roll. I do like how it's only picking up some of the, the brown. And the reason I'm using the watercolour is because I don't actually have the colours I need in acrylic. So I'm just using the watercolour. And I might actually eventually add some ink too. We'll see now. But I do like that. So what I might do is... I can't get away from my inks. I'm always using my inks. I really want to try not to, just for a change. I might add a bit more color. just a dot of yellow just to give it a bit of a more of a vintage rustic look so I might just add to see how this goes it's not really yellow yellow okay. and just to help it spread I'm just going to add a little bit more white more of a rust color which I like and it's good because you can still see obviously the the script behind I 
I want some darker sections then I've got more concentrated color so I'm just going to put a little bit more in certain areas I quite like that it's a start and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my distress grit paste it's a Tim Holtz product and it's very very thick and grainy it's sort of sort of like gesso I suppose but much thicker and it gives it a very rough um, finish which I like for the vintage look so I'm just going to take a little bit on my small little palette knife and just this is just to give it a little bit of texture now I haven't dried the color underneath on purpose I want to I want the color to blend a little bit into the grit paste I'm just going to use another one to scoop it out because I don't want the color to get into my tub. Now if you don't have a palette knife or a spatula, you could just use a piece of cardboard that also works just fine. Gonna do to this one too. I quite like that. I might just take it all the way to the ends because we can always use the off cuts that we don't use for this project for tags or for something else. So I might as well do the whole area. I think that's just She says, and then add some more. I do like when it's sort of, I'm not quite sure if you can see, just over here where you see it spread with the spatula, with the palette knife, it sort of does leave a little bit of a raised area, which I really like. So I'll just get that there too. I think we're good with that. So I'm just going to dry this quick. Alright, that's now pretty dry. Now I'm going to add a little bit of ink. <laughs> I can't go without it, but I'm not quite sure if I should cut out my section first and then do the inking or just ink it now. So what I think I might do is actually cut the piece that I'm going to use first. So I'm just going to measure with my frame now this frame is very inexpensive I got it from a big W here in Australia I think it was five dollars or four dollars and it did have a glass in the front which I've taken out and it actually is a like a shadow box it has this extra piece inside which we're going to leave because we want to have the shadow box feel so we will leave that inside we're just going to use this back section now just to measure what we're going to cut I'm going to pick a section that I like 
and I do think I like this with the rust over there so I'm probably just going to go with this piece here so I'm just going to roughly trace the section that I want and like I said you can use this other bit for another one or you can make tags or something else it really doesn't have to go to waste and we're just going to cut this out Now the measuring has to be, um, the cutting has to be quite exact so it fits really nicely in the frame. You don't want it too small that it'll fall forward if it's too big. Obviously the back won't close. So sometimes you have to go back and forth a little bit with the cutting just to get the size perfect. But it's not an impossible task. So what it should look like, just bring another quick squiz. See it's slightly too big, just a teensy weensy bit. So I'm just going to do a little slice. Very, very, very thin. going to look something like that. Alright, so we've got it measured. I'm just going to pop it out again and finish decorating it. So now I'm going to put, I want to give it more of a vintage feel. So I'm going to use my Distress Ink with my applicator. Now I've got a, a sponge on here that I've used before with the grit paste and as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, it sort of roughed it up a little bit. So just be wary that if you do use it on the grit paste, it does tear it up a little bit because it's quite rough. So um, use it if you have a spare or you can always use like an old makeup sponge or something else. So I'm just going to first do the edges. make the corners a little darker and then what I want to do is make certain areas inside just a little darker now what's going to happen is the grit paste is going to resist the ink but the background um, paper will not, so it'll get darker there. So we're just going to just do it here and there. And I like that contrast it creates between the grit paste and the background. I think that's just fine. And then I'm going to add a little bit of stamping. Some black ink. It's just a vintage script that I have. I just think this adds a really nice vintage feel to it. Now for the next step, um, we're going to see what we're going to put on top of it. Now I had an idea of doing a little vintage, um, a little vintage child with wings. Now these printouts that I have, I have used them before in another project with my vintage tags with um, little vintage. Sorry, my 
tags with vintage fairy children. These are from Louise Heinzel. I'll put the link in the description of this video. She has a range of them that you can print out and use. Um, instead of like scouring Pinterest or the internet trying to find little vintage children, she has quite a few in this pack so you can just um, download them and use them over and over again. And I quite for some reason really like this girl. She's a little bit unusual and very like thoughtful so I'm going to use her for this project. So I'm just going to cut her out to start off with. And I am going to cut out the little sections in between her arms there so the background can shine through. Go. The background's going to shine through, which I like. And then I'm going to give her some wings. And I really thought of doing a little bit, bringing a little bit of pink into the picture. So I'll probably just use these ones. This is from an old Philo journal thing I had, I think, from a long time ago. I don't even remember where I got it from. So I'm just going to use. I think these ones have a little touch of pink just for something a little, a little bit of colour. Now I only need the wings, so I'm not going to cut out the body, I'm just going to cut out the wings. So I have a few different ideas. Oh, I like that. And then I do have this these frames that are from a scrapbook book from a hundred years ago. And I thought to use them. They're very glossy, but that's okay. We can always go over them with a bit of gesso. But I'm wondering if, because I do want something in the background, I don't want it just plain. So I'm wondering if something like this would work. But I'll just turn down the pink a bit, it's not quite so bright. And maybe have it a little bit, this to the one side. Oh, I'll just have it this way. It doesn't have to even have to be on the whole page, it could just be that way and then I could have the little girl a little bit more on this side how would that look or we have the gold but that gets a little bit lost I think I think what I'll do is, let me turn down this pink one with a little bit of gesso and just see what it looks like. So I'm taking a pretty rough brush because I don't want it to be obviously solid white, I want it to be streaky and looking sort of weathered. Let's just see if I can achieve that.
I think that works. It's lightened it in areas. I'm not quite sure I like that. But sometimes it takes a while to get something looking how you imagined it. Just try the gold one. What I might do is I have some gold acrylic paint. I might just actually add that on top to actually make it even more gold, more like an ornate gold and see if that maybe works. I think I need to do is get this pink to match more this pink unless I use the bright pink which is also an option so let's try that now it doesn't matter if these wings aren't full because we are going to have a little bit off the page so that will actually work just fine so I'll just cut these out quickly So maybe, let's see how we go with the dark pink. So if we were to put that frame there, just almost off the page, and our little wings over here, doesn't matter if they're falling off, with our little girl. Oh yeah, I think that works much better. I actually like the pink. Yes, 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 I like that. All right, so we'll go with the dark pink, but I'm not quite happy with this, so I'm wondering if I should put Let's wipe it a little bit. I've just got a baby wipe that I'm wiping with, just a little bit more of a color show. I think that will work. I'm just going to dry that quickly. Right, so now we just have to work on placement of how we're going to do this frame because I can't decide if I want it sideways or upways. So let's try this way first. Sort of halfway off the page. And then our girl here with her beautiful wings. Just need to see what it looks like from the top with the frame. I do like that. And let's just try it with the the whole frame had to be in. Mm, I like that too, so that doesn't actually help the situation. Oh, maybe if I put a second frame. I'll bring this one down a little bit. And this one. Now I 
don't think that's in too much. But now I think the frame is a little empty, so we need to do something to make that pop a little bit. So we need to have something dewy. I'm going to add a little bit of something into the frame. So what I'm going to do is I've got this number stencil and I'm just going to do it with gesso. I suppose I could use squid paste because it's a bit more chunky. So sort of just where this is going to be, I'll put a couple of numbers just randomly. Just using the little Then maybe just one big number in the corner. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's okay if it spills over. That should be fine. Uh, let's just put that down there. I'm just going to dry that. I'm just going to add a touch of For a bit of contrast, I think I'm going to add a bit of black. Let's just see how that'll look. So if we have that like that. And then our little girl like this. I think it does need some black for the contrast. Right, there it is. I'm just going to put a little drop with some water with a thin paintbrush. Just going to water that down a bit. And then what I'm going to do is just let it run down. I'll need to... This just helps the paint flow. So we're just going to put just a drop and just let it run with some water. I'm actually using acrylic paint. I apologize. I couldn't find my watercolor. I don't know what's happened to the black. But acrylic paint works just fine. Just water it down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Just going to go inside the numbers just for some contrast.
I like that. So a little bit on this side too, just to balance it. Although you probably won't see it much because the little um, girl will be there, but it'll shine through the little areas that you do see. It actually makes a really lovely effect when it goes onto the grid paste. It spreads in a totally different way that I've seen before, and I really like that. It sort of gives it more like a grey tone. It absorbs some of it, and I really, really like that. It looks a little bit like concrete, if that makes sense. Oh, I do like that effect on the grid paste. I thought it, it would run more, but it actually doesn't. But it actually works really nice. And I think that is just plenty. Let me just... Now while the hot glue gun is heating up, I'm just going to work on the little girl. I want it to be off the page, so a little bit 3D, so I need to elevate her a little bit. And to elevate her, because she's just printed on just paper, I need to make her a bit stiffer, on firmer. So I'm going to stick her onto a cardstock and then cut her out again. So I'm going to first stick together two pieces of the cardstock. And maybe I should cut that first. Getting a little bit too excited. Right, so I'm just going to stick two pieces together. Just make it double so it's more secure. And then we're going to stick her on top and then cut her out. We could even do a third piece. I might just do it three times. It'll need a little bit more precision to cut, but I think it'll work better. The firmer she is, the more she'll stay in the right shape. I think we're going to just glue her down. Glue's a bit too blobby. We don't need it so blobby. And then we'll fussy cut her out. Now we're ready to stick things down. So we're going to start with the frame. And position that where you want it. I'm not going to press the hot glue down too much because I do want the, the frame to be slightly lifted too. So it's enough just to stick it. Make sure I make it straight. And then our little girl, we need her to be elevated. I want her right up. So I'm going to put a few bits of cardboard just behind her so she's lifted up. So just 
going to cut strips. These don't have to be perfect. No one's going to see them at the back of the figure. They're just about the size. There's also like a puffy double-sided tape that you can get. Um, I don't have any of that. I used to have that's finished, but you don't really need that. You can just use what you have. Old packaging is just fine. going to stick these down one on top of the other but what I'm going to do first is stick her wings down because I want the wings just behind her just a small drop of the glue There we go. And now we're going to stick the cardboard down. Just make sure it's not too big and doesn't stick out over the, the picture that you're trying to raise. You don't want it jumping out on the sides. There's no right or wrong amount of these. I want this quite high, so I'm putting quite a few, but you don't have to put so many. You can put less or you can put more. I think she's ready to be glued down but what I might do first I might just trim her wing now let's see exactly so I'm d lining it up at the bottom and then just over there, I'm just going to draw a pencil mark and just trim that. It'll be more difficult once it's actually stuck. So I'm just going to just give that a trim. And then we can stick her down. We have a little bit of time with the hot glue gun, very little time to move it around. So be quite sure where you want to put it. There we go. Let's see what she looks like in the frame. I just hope everything fits. <laughs> Once you push it in. It's just hooked on the little Close paper. Oh, she needs to be a little bit higher up actually. That's not going to work 
because she needs to be above the frame so she actually needs to be lifted up that's my mistake so let's see if we can gently peel her off without wrecking the background too much or we could just cut her at the bottom actually might be easier so it's sort of the depth of this frame is how much needs to come off so she's actually over it so I'm thinking what is this Shana doing is she even know what she's doing sometimes yes sometimes no <laughs> right let's just pop this out I'm going to use this as a guide and I'm going to trim this much off her bottom the bottom part of her dress And then her wing needs to be the same. So actually, this is the dress first. Well, at least with this video, you sort of learn from my mistakes so that when you make yours, you do it right the first time. So I'll be your trial and error. You haven't stopped the video by now good on you there we go oh hooray okay there we go so she's 3d she's sitting on top of the frame there her wing is on top and there we go okay so now i think we can actually close it and what we will do is um i might just add something else just to finish it off so i will just put the back on it so it's firm and in place and then what we can do is add something to it I do think it needs a little something maybe some flowers so let's see what I have so I have these pink and white paper flowers and I think the pink matches quite nicely so let's just see what we can do with these Do feel it needs something to add to it the frame a 
maybe some black thread will also work. Just behind the flowers, just to contrast with the black that's on her wings and the background. So what I might do is just lift that, crumple up some black thread like that. flowers on top of that. What do we think about that? Yep, I think that'll work. Stick the corner one down like that. Oops, then I've lost all the string. What else could we put there? Mm. Maybe another frame. Frame within a frame. Or oh, maybe that's better. Maybe less string and an additional frame. And the frame I'll just leave in the wood color so it sort of contrasts with the background. So we'll put that on top there. With a flower on the top. Yes, okay. I think I'm just going to stick it down, otherwise we might be here forever trying to decide what we're going to put in this corner. I'm just going to trim the end. I don't like the end showing of the string, like sort of the blunt end. And this is a bit too high, so I'm just going to trim this too. And there we go. I think that works. Took us a while to get here. Well, it took me a while to get here with this little girl and cutting her up. But I think it's worked out quite nice, and I quite like that. It's not too complicated. It's pretty simple, but I think it's effective. So I hope this has inspired you to also have a go at an author page kind of project. I'm going to be having more with different styles and designs, so I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel to see those. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!